So today we're going to show you how to get the most out of your RC crawler. Stubbs RC. Today we're going to show you how to make your TRX4 crawl better. Whether you bought it new, used, I bought mine used, badly modded. Yeah, I'm just going to walk through some steps on how to make this thing crawl like a beast. First things first, LEDs. If they're your flavor, good on you. Do better wire management than the previous owner of this truck did. We also have a Chinese lift kit. Not anymore. I've already touched this truck, I've already trimmed the body, but I'll go through the steps anyway on what to do. First things first, bed rack. Get rid of it. That is, now I've got my scale out here. Everything we do is going to be about weight. So this bed rack, try to balance it, roughly 180 grams. 180 grams of top weight. So this truck came with some upgrades came with a 1080 ESC, not installed, and it came with a Radiant Reactor 3300 KV thing built for a Rustler or something along those lines. That went. The 1080 included, luckily, is now installed in the truck. And like I said, I touched this already. Um, I pulled the snorkel off the body, and then I trimmed the body all under the grill, along the lines, across the body line here, so it cut off about that much. I trimmed it so the back bumper sat nice and tucked up in there. So just trimming the body, I know we lost some grams off of that, uh, but that's not the only thing we've done to the body before we trimmed it. And I've high clearance trimmed it a lot. Um, what I've done is I've lowered the body posts as low as I can get them, like all the way down. They are uh, maxed out. Trimming that body and bringing it down as low as you can get it is going to bring your weight all the way down closer to center of gravity. You want to do that as much as possible in a crawler. Anything up here is tip over weight. And the lower you can get the overall weight, the better it's going to side hill and just handle in general. We don't want to add weight to the frame if possible. We want to add weight to axle, portal, wheel, inside wheel. What I did, first and, first and foremost, is I printed a low center gravity battery tray. Some people hate them, some people love them. I'm kind of a fan now that I've ran this truck requires you to change out this rear brace to get a little bit more clearance back here. Still retains the stock shock towers and body mount. You don't even have to take them all the way off. Take out the three screws in the side, scoot the shock towers back, take out some bumper bolts, split the frame apart, and you can wiggle that battery tray in and out. Uh, I'm not going to do it on the video for this because there's plenty of videos out there with that. So I'm going to throw my battery in here. And I'm going to do a tilt test on it. I'm just tying my wire together. It's not plugged in. But I want even the wiring to be where it's supposed to be. Alright, so I got my phone holder on my board. I got a rubber mat on here for extra grippies. Let's see what the drag brake lets go at. So, with no throttle input. Let's go about 18 degrees. Thank you. 
we get a, we get 61 degrees on this setup of straight climb. This is a trail truck. This is something we can go out and drive all day, all day. It has a full size 5,000 milliamp to us battery, full size. And everybody's got their own. Uh, everybody's got their preferences. Me, mine's not always to kill every line. Mine's to have a full body and full suspension. And I mean, it's not insane flex, but I've got flex. I've got a stock skid plate. All right, we're back to the build. This truck came with these swanky trill bumpers. I didn't really feel like taking them off. I could cut the back post down and save a little weight back there. Probably actually will do that because it's all the way back here. Um, I could put the sport bumper back on, save a little weight in the back as well. We are looking for a minimum a 60-40 split. So let's get into what's actually done to this truck. This is a TRX4 kit. It has a stock servo, which will be changed soon. Order one. It has a full size 2S 5000 milliamp battery. It's got a Holmes Crawlmaster Sport, which even holding on that incline, nice and cool. And I did it more than one time. It's going to come out in the edit as once, but I did it a bunch of times trying to get my table jig set up right. I've done just a little bit of wire management. Uh, I loosened up the shocks to where the springs just about fall off and in the rear I added about an eighth of an inch of adjustment. About that much. Just a little preload in the back. But you can see it's pretty neutral biased. It doesn't really do a whole lot. Now that has repercussions when you go on a tilt table or tilt situation where it's going to want to roll over. But we trade a little for a little. I like to truck the flex. And I like it to be lower to the ground. I don't necessarily like it jacked way up and trying to tip over. Trim the wheel, the uh, running boards. I've trimmed the side steps back to the mount right here in the front. These like to get caught up on stuff and I don't want to get caught up. I like the body protection on the sides and I like to have something to slide by. A lot of people take these guys off. Personally, I leave them on. But I do use uh, the risers, it puts them flat flush with the running board, gives you a nice kicker. I cut the canyon trails, it came with these wheels already on it, so, and they're nice wheels, they're trails. I like them, the truck is red, the wheels are red. Went with my theme, this one's getting red. I didn't really have a spare set of tires for this that were great. Um, I have some have some good tires, have some tusks, those are great, but I don't think that's what I want to do with this truck. I got this truck in a trade. The only thing I had to add to it was the servo, the motor, and the battery tray, and these risers. The battery tray and the risers cost me 42 cents, or whatever it cost me the material to print them in PLA. Just doing a little testing on it. All right, so a little closer up view of the truck here. We've got Holmes Crawl Master Sport 15 turn. This is what John recommends for the uh, TRX4 Sport single speed. Uh, it's not real fast. It does crawl good. Trails along okay. Walking pace, if you will. Canadian waterproof. And a Gen's Ace 5000 milliamp battery. I'm just going to leave that one in there because I don't need to take it out. So. What we're going to do now is we're just going to kind of go over this truck. I noticed there's some shock oil down here on the shocks. There are a little front work, the rears. They don't really return like they should. They're a little sticky. Sometimes they just stay where they are. We're going to take them apart. We're going to change the fluid down to 10 weight. I want these shocks to be free and uh, flex easily. Um, it comes with, I think Traxxas uses like a, somewhere near a 30 weight. Who knows what's in this, so because it's a used truck. So let's get it on the stand and uh, get the wheels off and get it cranking on. Crap brush, I'm gonna get my 
table all dirty. So I'm just gonna kinda do a little truck maintenance here. Just kinda clean it up as I go. Shocks off, clean around my hubs, portals. It's gonna get dirty again. But I am gonna pull these portal covers off as part of maintenance and check the grease, check the tire rods and bushings in the front end, kingpin bushings. Seems like they're pretty good. So I guess let's start by pulling off the shocks and I'm going to cheat a little here, pull the shock off, put the screw right back in the link because I hate chasing these things when they get all floppy and the drive shaft falls out and it just gets me a little bit out of shape. So put that right back in. just so it stays. I'm going to work my way around the truck and do that on all four cars. because I just worked on with hair in there. Inspect the O-ring on there. Looks good. Yep. It's actually pretty clean. Not even mad. Shock a few times. Now the way you take these shocks bar without damaging them is a pair of side cutters. You notice the blades of the side cutters go one direction. You want up that side cutter all the way against the uh, end ball there. Don't do it this way. The flush side all the way down. Just grab that shaft. It doesn't take a whole lot of force. You just twist off the end ball. And notice I'm not letting it slip and slice in or twist back and forth too much. It is trying to a little bit. This is going to keep from making any marks where there's uh, contact with the O-rings. So end ball is off. So there's a little shiny spot right there where the pliers made a dent. But it's down lower than any of these O-rings go. Now you're going to crack, crack that cap. Pull it off. Jeff has some marks on it. Looks like somebody's grabbed it with the pliers before, but not, not too bad. So you're gonna polish to do something on there.
fiber, clean it off. Got rid of most of those scratches. It ain't perfect, but it's good enough for a trail truck. Pull these O-rings out. They're not leaking too bad. Believe it or not, there is an acceptable amount of leakage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them back together. But I'm gonna put them back together with green slime. And what green slime will do is it will stop the leakage. It's just silicone shock grease. If I've got one of these that come out with really bad scratches on the shaft and a lot of oil down, oil residue down below on the shock, then I'll replace the O-rings. Switch to blue O-rings. Instead of the spacer it is so freely moving compared to what it was before. We grab the shock. It's got green slime on it, so I'll try not to wipe that off. We'll add a little bit in a second. Get this rod in, threading straight. And look for the marks you made earlier. Grab in the exact same spot, so you're not adding any extra marks to it. Screw your rod end on. This end does not need to be tight. It needs to be screwed on to the end of the thread and no more. A little bit of green slime on here. And more we'll shock field. And man, it is a dream how easy it moves now. Now it's time to fill the shock. This just takes practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting a little in. I'm gonna work it a couple of times. Just a just the slightest amount of up and down. Get the air out from behind the piston. You build enough shocks and you start to get a feel for how much more it needs. So you're gonna put this together. Something's gonna gack out of there. You're gonna wanna tighten it down until the O-ring makes contact. And as you squeeze it, it's gonna try to push the piston out. Hydrostatic lock. So what we'll do is wipe this off. And we're gonna dump out two drips. One drip, two drip, one, it's like two and a half. You do get covered in shock oil doing this, and your fingers feel slick for a day. So I'm going all the way to the top of the throw, all the way down, and all the way to the top, super slow so I don't suck in the air into it. And now there's a little bit of a air spring to it. It's a fine line to how much to take out to get it to tune right. Sometimes it's literally just dabbing it. Because if you take out too much, you'll have a little bit of air at the top. Good enough for a rebuilt old junk shock. And then sneak this back in here. Snapped on. Set that to where that spring just barely holds up. Right. And then add about 8 inch preload. 
pretty good. Now, since I let all the shocks hang like this to begin with, as I rebuild one, install that shock all the way. Now I know that one's done. It's super light. So now it's on to the next shock. Do the same process over and over again all four times.
Now we're going to get down to the part, what I think is one of the most important parts of building a crawler. So we've got zero. Weight on. Nothing touching the ground. <laughs> we have 2,000 grams. This is 2 kilograms and some change. So it's cycling a little bit. Two kilograms in the front. I am supporting the opposite axle off the ground just to try to keep the truck about level. That's a little pro tip there. 1574 grams in the rear. Current split weight on this is 5644. I'd like to get that a little bit more front bias. Maybe we'll add a little brass up front on that axle. As of right now, it does pretty good on 5644 bias. The goal being about 6040. The other option we have is to lose some rear weight. Um, probably could have a little bit more accurate scale set up, looking at maybe getting some corner scales. But at the end of the day, we really want more forward bias. But this truck doesn't even want to tip back until, because uh, we're so low CG because the battery tray and everything else, this truck doesn't want to tip back until 60 to 61 degrees. Uh, in conclusion, I do believe that this truck will do pretty good out there, but I think on a cheap rig with pretty basic mods, I think we're doing all right. We've got the front tied down, We've got the rear nice and extra loose. Um, probably take a little bit of preload out of it just so it wants to sit a little bit more level too much out for a fairly stock rig should have a decent amount of droop I don't necessarily want any droop in the front just because we climb so much but uh yeah we'll see how she crawls 
uh, when we take her out here in a few days after this crappy weather goes away.